Yes. Uh, coming back to uh, supplements, whether it be herbs or minerals, uh, there are so many companies out there, you know, um, within like Whole Foods or any health food store, yes. but also catalogs, you know, online. Uh, how do we, uh, do you recommend any companies or how can we, um, you know, um, uh, critically, you know, analyze, you know, are their sources pure, do they have fillers? You know, pesticide this and that, you know, trust what they say, since there aren't any really guidelines that they have to follow. So the, do you all hear the question was, how do we make a judgment and make a discernment on the quality of, say, supplements and otherwise, I assume, huh? Eh? Yeah, I, mean, I know homeopathic remedies are more... And homeopathic control. remedies. The homeopathic remedies, let me answer that for first part really quick. The homeopathic remedies are pretty standardized, and at the moment, all of the major companies are, as far as I understand, do, are pretty well in terms of keeping to those standards. The standards have relaxed from the turn of the century when the standards are much more rigid in terms of materials, in terms of environment for creating the remedies, et cetera, et cetera. The standards have relaxed dramatically, but for the people, there's a, there's a few pharmacies that are very trustworthy. Helios uh, is one of the major ones. The one in Berkeley, what's the one in Berkeley called? Somebody? Berkeley? Do you know, remember the one in Berkeley? What is it called? Quinn, Hahnemann, Hahnemann Pharmacy, and the man Quinn, what is his name in, in San Rafael? Do you know who I'm referring to? I'm sorry. Uh, International Foundation for Homeopathy is a good source for referencing that. Okay, International Foundation for Homeopathy, IFH. And uh, there's National Foundation for Homeopathy also, but I would put International Foundation a little bit higher. But Helios is someone you can refer to. A Hahnemann Clinic and Hahnemann, uh, the Hahnemann Pharmacy. Laboratories. Is it Hahnemann Laboratories? I think so. In Berkeley? The one in California. In California, yeah. So those are all good people. But there, you know, again, the last I checked, there were some homeopaths and some people who were pharmacists who investigated the standards in all of the places. And Standard, uh, uh, Boiron. Dolisos, all of these major, all the major manufacturers were doing pretty good and, and good enough to stay up to standards so they're trustworthy. Now as far as supplements, as you were talking about supplements and foods and there were some questions that came up, I remember this, this uh, health, this store that, that had organic foods, a restaurant that had organic foods in Boulder that used to have a, this menu with all these organic things and they had nice things like falafel and <laughs> things like that and then they, one of the things they had on their menu was number 12 was uh, was vitamin pills on a lettuce leaf. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty good. That was one of the meals they had. And actually, people used to go in and order it. <laughs> and they weren't serious, but they gave it out. But generally speaking, I mean, and there, I may be at odds with some author, you know, you might give me some input on this, or uh, uh, you may, yeah, you may give us some, in, may in, some input on this too. I, my teachers have always encouraged to be inclined to go towards organic food for the source of nutrition rather than supplements. And, uh, you know, I, for example, I've always, I've seen extraordinary things happen with, uh, you know, brewer's yeast, nutritional yeast, very little bit of, in a day. For example, with di type 2 diabetes, extraordinary things. I've seen absolute total reversals of, of neuropathies with two level teaspoons of brewer's yeast a day. And this is when I was in practice in California. And this was pretty consistent. Uh, but I didn't see the same thing happen with vitamin B supplements and so forth. So my teacher believed that, you know, the organic sources of materials, you get all of these supportive, I think you kind of referred to that. Uh, you get supportive elements and supportive pieces that we may not be able to recognize. So I try to encourage people to get calcium from milk, you know, from yogurt to eat alfalfa, to eat greens that, that support calcium, rather than taking, and again, like I was saying, the, this idea that we're transmuting the non, from one realm to another, removing materials from the animal and the vegetable kingdom into the human kingdom, and transmuting it, not just, not just uh, assimilating, there's a transmutation of kingdoms, of worlds, of realms that's going on. By that same token, 
the homeopaths have for years really been pretty much down on calcium supplement from a calcium carbonate source, for example, as opposed to calcium in milk or the new kinds of things, coral calcium and the organic sources of calcium that are closer to the animal human kingdom, right? So, so uh, in terms of quality of materials, I know there's good quality materials out there. And when it comes to herbs, my teacher, another thing, one of my, my teacher in Pakistan, one of the things he emphasized, he said, was that unfortunately herbalism, for those of you who study herbalism, it's important to realize that while you can take a tack like might happen in the naturopathic schools in which all of the herbal usage is based on modern uh, standards for scientific study, you know, and that supports it. Uh, there's also traditions, but in those traditions also there is infection and the watering down of the traditions. So, the, so very much of the herbal medicine gets focified. And what my teacher in Pakistan said, he said, is so often people use herbs and plants, which he considered the highest kind of medicine, but he used, they use them in the wrong way. And in other words, and he always made, pointed out that people would use a plant or an herb for something, for something, typically use it for something, whereas it was actually really best for some other completely different thing. And one of, the, one of the case in points in respect to that was the wonderful medicine that I grew up with as a child, which is Vicks. This, I still, it's still great medicine. One of the great standard, you know, well, Vicks, man. But, you know, you don't rub it on your chest. You don't put it on your lip to smell it. You don't put it in the, in the vaporizer. Vicks, if you're in a third world country, use it on the infected wound on your foot or around, the, around your feet where you're going to constantly get it reinfected because it's such a great antiseptic and antibacterial and it stays in place because it's in that petroleum jelly base and so forth. Or breathing it in or old boss oil to breathe it in and to use the, the, the fumes for it for, for uh, dealing with bacterial possibilities in the chest, in the lungs or chamomile tea. And then the homeopaths point out and sort of demonstrate that chamomile tea, probably the most sedative aspect of chamomile tea is the pleasant taste and the social belief that it's calming. Right? I mean, natur naturopaths, is there anything in chamomile that actually is sedative and calmative, cal cal that actually does anything other than its pleasant flavor? Is there any drug effect that's actually calming? Yeah. What? From oh, chamomile? Yeah. It has sedative effect, but it also... Well, what's the chemical? But does it have actual chemical sedative effect? I mean, is it identifiable? I don't think it does. It's a good chamomile as a whole. It is separated all the... So there's studies with chamomile as a whole. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess in some of the old books, you'll see the chamomile and the homeopathic... Maybe this is a, you know, if it works, uh, maybe because it's homeopathic that it works. So the point I'm making is that he used, my teacher taught the use of chamomile tea as an anti-inflammant, as an antibacterial. So it was one of the great eye washes. So it's not a tea, and not many people find that if they give chamomile tea in its gross form to children, it can actually be, uh, personally, if I drink chamomile tea, my stomach just goes to chaos. You know, because there are oils that have been identified chemically as being irritant in chamomile as well. So anyway, the point I'm making is that when it comes to herbs and these things, that there's, there's a degree of it becoming focified. That is, it becoming popularly understood to do something, and it may be otherwise. Or it may be that it's effective only because it's commonly understood to do so. Right? Um, this brings up a point about homeopathy. 